Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way, and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. All right, guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. All right, so I hope you guys got to take a little bit of break after addition to carbonyl reactions because, whew, that's a tough section, okay? Looking at that for the first time, really overwhelming. Hopefully you got a chance to take a break, practice it a little bit, and the more you practice, the easier it becomes, okay? You just have to write it out a bunch of times. But all right, let's move on to the second main category of reactions that aldehydes and ketones undergo. And these are gonna be called enols and enolate reactions, okay? So let's go ahead and write this up here. The second main category is going to be called enols and enolates. All right, you guys, so whenever we start a new topic, we always start out with some general features about that topic before talking about any of the details, okay? So hey, let's go ahead and talk about some general features. or some general info about enols and enolates. Okay, so let's start out by talking about what enols and enolates even look like, okay? So hey, how do you know what an enol looks like? Well, the name kind of gives it away. Check this out. An enol is gonna look like this. It's gonna have a double bond. Double bonds are known as alkenes, so that's where the ene of enol comes from. So double bond ene, and guess what? It's going to have an OH group on it, also known as an alcohol. So you have a double bond ene, alcohol, all, an ene all. That's where this guy gets its name. Let me write this up here for you. So you've got ene from the double bond alkene, so ene, alcohol, all, ene all. Okay, so that was an enol. Now let's see what an enolate looks like. And it's gonna look exactly like an enol, except it's going to not have that hydrogen. And this is known as an enolate. Enolate. An enolate is the deprotonated form of an enol. And this should sound very familiar if you remember back to your biochemistry days. In biochemistry, you study things like pyruvic acid. If you take the deprotonated form of pyruvic acid, pyruvic acid deprotonated turns into pyruvate. Or glutamic acid, when you deprotonate it, turns into glutamate. Enol, the deprotonated form of enol, is enol-8. Okay, you guys? So that's the common way to name the acid and the deprotonated form of it, okay? So like pyruvic acid turns into pyruvate. Enol turns into enolate, okay? Okay, so now that you know what enols and enolates look like, now let's show you how to make these guys. How do we make these from aldehydes and ketones, okay? So let's show you how to form them. Okay, so let's call this next section forming enols. And enols, we said, are the protonated form or the deprotonated form? The protonated form, right? So would you think that you're going to make enols in acid or base? Well, if they're the protonated form, you're going to make them in acid, right? Because acid is protonating. So form enols in acid and enolates we said enolates are the deprotonated form right you guys so do you think that you're going to make enolates in acid or in base you're going to make enolates in base okay 
So forming enols in acid and enolates in base. So get one thing straight, you guys. Enols are made in acid. Enolates are made in base. These two never coexist with each other. If you're ever going to do a reaction, you're either just going to do it with an enol in acid or you're going to do it with an enolate in base. These two never coexist in the same reaction, okay? There's two completely different conditions. One is in acid, the other one is in base, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and start out with how you form enols first. And enols are the protonated or deprotonated form? Protonated, right? So are you going to make these in acidic conditions or basic conditions? In acid, right? Okay, so what you're going to do is either take an aldehyde or a ketone and turn it into an enol in acid conditions, okay? So let's just go ahead and take a ketone and aldehyde will work exactly the same way. But just take this ketone and react it in acid since you're going to make an enol, okay? So Hey, what better than the quintessential acid, H3O plus? All right, you guys, so you're going to throw in some H3O plus, which is an acid. And why do you throw in acid? To protonate something, right? What are we going to protonate? The oxygen of the carbonyl. So go ahead and protonate this. This is nothing new. And this will give you this, along with the water. And do me a favor and also draw in a hydrogen on this carbon. Because check it out, you guys. Here's a carbonyl. One carbon away from the carbonyl is known as the alpha carbon. Hydrogens on the alpha carbon are known as alpha hydrogens, right? This should bring back memories of when we first talked about general features of aldehydes and ketones. I gave you two pieces of general information about aldehydes and ketones. The first one was where I showed you an aldehyde and a ketone, and I told you, hey, oxygen's more electronegative than carbon, making oxygen pull electrons away from that carbon, which makes this carbon partially positive, which makes it electron poor, making it an electrophile. So nucleophiles will want to come in and add to that electrophile to hook it up with some electrons, right? This was the basis for addition to carbonyl reactions, what we just saw in the last section. The second piece of general information I gave you about aldehydes and ketones was that we had an aldehyde or a ketone drawn out I told you that here's a carbonyl, one carbon away from the carbonyl is the alpha carbon, and on that alpha carbon you have alpha hydrogens. We put a dotted box around this hydrogen, and we said that there was something special about an alpha hydrogen. Do you guys remember what this was? We said that alpha hydrogens are special because they are slightly acidic. And why were they slightly acidic, you guys? We said that we could pull these alpha hydrogens off we could deprotonate these with a base and move these electrons onto that carbon. And normally we said we could never put a negative charge on a carbon like this, but why can we do it here? We said that these alpha hydrogens were slightly acidic because of resonance. If you remember, you guys, we drew a little resonance structure where we move these electrons up here and then put the electrons from the double bond onto that oxygen, which formed this. Okay, this is where enols and enolates come in. So if you remember, the first piece of general information showed you how aldehydes and ketones acted as electrophiles. Nucleophiles needed to come in and add to these aldehydes and ketones. The second piece of general information I gave you about aldehydes and ketones is about alpha hydrogen acidity. You can deprotonate this and turn these aldehydes and ketones into nucleophiles. But let's see more what I'm talking about now. But this is just to help you remember the general features I gave you a long time ago, okay? Okay, so before we draw out any more of this mechanism, I want you guys to be thinking of two things. One is what we just talked about, about these alpha hydrogens being slightly acidic because of resonance, right? 
And the second thing I want you to be thinking is of a reaction we did not too long ago, okay? And that reaction was this. We took a carbonyl and we reacted it with an amine. This ended up forming an imine that had a plus charge on the nitrogen. At this point, we said, uh-oh, this nitrogen has a positive charge on it, but there's no hydrogen that we can deprotonate off that nitrogen. But what we can do is, okay, here's an imine. One carbon away from the imine is known as the alpha carbon, and on that alpha carbon, it has alpha hydrogens. These alpha hydrogens are slightly acidic because of resonance. So what we did before was we just took a base, we said that these alpha hydrogens are slightly acidic, so we can deprotonate this, use these electrons to form a double bond there, and kick these electrons up to that nitrogen, which formed an enamine. Remember, you guys? And this is going to be the same strategy for how we form our enols. All right, so back to our reaction up here. We have a positive charge on our oxygen. How can we get rid of this positive charge? Okay, well, one way is that we can deprotonate it, kick the electrons back to the oxygen. But all that's gonna do is take us back to our previous step. We're trying to form an enol. Okay, so an alternate way of canceling out this positive charge is by looking to the alpha carbon. Okay, so here's a carbonyl. One carbon away from the carbonyl is the alpha carbon, and on the alpha carbon you have alpha hydrogens. Alpha hydrogens are slightly acidic because of resonance. So what you can do is take a base, deprotonate that alpha hydrogen, use these electrons between this carbon and this hydrogen to form a double bond, and then kick these electrons up to that oxygen. So you'll have formed a double bond there and kick these electrons up to that oxygen.